Yes, that's right, people. I fitted massive mountain bike tires to my gravel bike, but should I have? Will they unleash a wave of extra performance or will they be slow and heavy? And should I just buy a mountain bike and be done with? So to find out, over the last few weeks, I've been riding these tires from Victoria on two different gravel bikes and two bikes that couldn't be more different if they tried. They're very stiff, very aero and very carbon 3T Exploro Ultra, link to that review down below. And this, my very own personal Fairlight Sakan, a steel gravel bike to find out if wider rubber is a good thing on a gravel bike. And over the next few minutes, I'll share my pros and cons of my experience of riding these tires. So without further ado, let's dive in. Comfort is easily and most clearly the biggest benefit of fitting massive balloon tires on your gravel bike. That huge cushion of air allows you to float over every bump, route, rock, rough trail, like they're not there, in a way that a narrow tyre just can't. I'm running really low pressures, so 20, 21 psi, the same as I would on a mountain bike, but much lower than any narrow gravel tyre. And the result is a magic carpet-like ride quality. They float through routes, smash through rocks, and let you carry more speed and more fun and a bigger smile into rough trails where on a narrow gravel tire you'll be clinging on for dear life and that improved comfort makes a big difference on my local trails which are far from smooth rough right ways loads of rocks mountain bike trails with loads of roots and drops not the smooth gravel you have in large parts of the world it's not only a benefit on rough chundry trails where you might be better on a mountain bike but also a hard pack washboard gravel as well. The other massive benefit of these massive tyres, right after that comfort benefit, is control. And more control equals more fun. These big tyres act like suspension and let you plough through all sorts of technical trails that on a narrow tyre, on a conventional gravel bike, can be pretty sketchy and pretty scary if I'm honest with you. The bigger tyres give you more confidence, let you carry more speed into fun sections that I, on my gravel bikes, like to ride here in the Cotswolds. It's not all smooth, groomed gravel around here. It's mountain bike trails, routes, twisting single track trails, where yes, a mountain bike would be better perhaps, but with these tyres on a gravel bike, you can have nearly as much fun as you would on a mountain bike, and a lot more fun than you do on a narrow, 700 by 40 or 42. So that's a big benefit. If you, like me, enjoy pushing the limits of a gravel bike in terms of what trails you can ride them on, then bigger tires go a long, long way to really improving how much fun you can have when you are tackling the trails that you don't really see in the adverts for gravel bikes these days. And have a bonus of big tires like this is the reduced risk of a puncture compared to skinny gravel tires. In my experience with narrow gravel tires, even as wide as 40 or 45, you have to choose the tire pressure carefully. You want the tire pressure low enough for comfort and control when riding off-road, but high enough you reduce that risk of a puncture when you are slamming into roots and rocks. So a real balance between not being too high, not being too low. And with these tires, because they are so massive, are running super low pressures, just 20 and 21 psi front and rear, about half the pressure in a narrow gravel tire. Yet, on rocky terrain, there's a much lower risk of a puncture, and I can carry more speed into tricky trails than I would on a narrow tire at higher pressure. So, if you're fed up of puncturing on your gravel bike all the time, then fitting in massive mountain bike tires might just be the solution to your puncture woes. One immediate and obvious downside to big tyres is the speed, especially on the road. You can hear tyres sucking the road as you roll along, and they're clearly not as fast as a 700 by 42 or 45 with a nice low profile tread pattern, like a WTB Riddler or something of that type. But, all that said, they aren't super slow, and don't feel sluggish really, and they do roll along pretty well. Nice round shape to the tyre, 
that center section is closely packed together so they do roll along on the road and hard packed gravel pretty well it's just on hard packed gravel at high speeds when you're really motoring along really pushing out the watts that they are harder to maintain those high speeds and with a power meter your power definitely goes up so for high speed stuff i wouldn't recommend these but if you're riding gravel at low speed over a wider variety of trails then the speed difference isn't huge but for a lot of people for a lot of gravel riding and adventure riding i don't think the speed difference is all that much not enough to worry about for the benefits i mentioned earlier weight is an obvious downside to bigger tires because bigger tires means more rubber and it means more weight on the scales these tires measuring 2.25 inch wide weigh a whopping 680 grams light for a mountain bike tire but heavy for a gravel tire and for comparison to put that weight in perspective a typical gravel tire like the wtb rattler that actually came off this bike before i swapped the tires around in a 700 by 40 size weighs 490 grams each so together you're looking at nearly 400 grams of weight difference between the gravel tire and this mountain bike tire so quite a bit of weight difference in the tires alone and then there's a the fact the weight is at the outside of the wheel where you feel it the most so these definitely have a bigger impact in how the bike feels and the speed it presents on the road or smooth gravel compared to lighter narrow gravel tires one of the big downsides of fitting tires that are this wide and chunky is that many gravel bikes simply won't have clearance or space for tires like these these measure a whopping 57 millimeters across and while they fit this fair lights they can just fine loads of clearance around the rear stays and forks many modern gravel bikes simply won't have space for tires like these and that's been a big story of development over the last few years as gravel bikes have become increasingly popular generally put tire clearance has become more generous on gravel bikes but it's still a big difference from one extreme like this bike to other bikes where tire clearance is very limited and how do you know how wide a tire you can go on your gravel bike well the only way is to check with a manufacturer most bike brands will put recommended tire width for 700c and very often 650b which these are on their website another system that 3t have developed which i think makes a lot of sense but not enough brands are adopting it it's wham and ram because it takes into account the many variations of rim and tire combination which can vary a lot this tire here can be wider narrower taller or lower depending on the rim it's mounted to so that combination makes a big difference and some combination might fit just fine on your bike and some combination won't fit at all so best thing is check with the manufacturer and see what they recommend for maximum tire widths those then are my pros and cons of riding big tires on a gravel bike i'm sure you might have some that i've missed so leave a comment down below now i'm not for a minute suggesting that you rush out and buy these tires but i think the main takeaway from this video and from my experience of riding tires is that if you are riding rough challenging demanding technical trails then fitting the widest rubber your gravel bike would take is definitely a good thing for comfort for control for fun and for speed and if you want more information on choosing the best gravel tires then check this video right here and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy watching the video by hitting the button up here but that's all for today i'll see you again very soon thank you so much for watching